How is everyone doing today? My name is Chris. Welcome to Bourbon Sing. We're back today and we have got episode number three in our brand new Battle of the Bourbons Best Barrel Proof Bourbon on the Market series. Now, if you haven't seen episode one and two, we've already done two blind tastings of four whiskeys each. Each round, I'm moving forward two of my favorite barrel proofs and they're going to compete in the next round. So eventually we'll get to our final four and leave us with one barrel proof whiskey. Best in my opinion. Best in my opinion. So we still got eight whiskeys to go. You know, this is round three, four's coming up after this, and eight whiskeys, eight barrel proof whiskeys. I still don't know what these are. It's no longer blind blind because I know what the first eight whiskeys were. Um, in the beginning of all this, they were all blinded to me. I had no idea. At this point, it could be one of eight. But to be honest, I can't remember all 16 I put in this thing. So without further ado, let's get right into this. We'll start with what I always do, shuffle them up for you. All right, good enough. I have got my water here ready to go. I've got my results in the envelope here. Let's get right into round number three. As you can see, I left the caps off these. I've got the caps here, but I left them off because they are all barrel proof. I want them to open up. So they've been opening up for about 10, 15 minutes. Ooh, this one's got a lot of what seems like rye spice initially jumping out of the glass. Um, rye spice and an alcohol burn, you know, that proof coming through. Smells very spicy to me. Definitely a little bit of fruitiness coming through too. It leans more honestly towards like the rye spice fruitiness though. Like some orange peel maybe. There's something like sweet about this too though. It's not your normal like deep rich caramel vanilla sweetness though. Something a little bit different. Let's go right into it. Ooh, woo! That's got awesome flavor on the palate. Awesome flavor on the palate. A lot of rye spice on this one for me. I don't know if the, this better be a high rye mash bill or something because that's what's coming through. Rye kick. I got some black pepper coming through. Definitely the citrus notes I was describing. Orange peel, almost like a little bit of lemon peel too coming through. A little bit of cinnamon. Um, really nice. It's still got your bourbon notes in there too. There's still that caramel vanilla sweetness. But this definitely, first time through at least, leans towards high rye. All right, let's go into sample number two. Immediate oak note coming through on this for me. Smells much more mellow than um, sample number one. Maybe not as high proof. Or just maybe that rye spice gave me that burst of, of flavor on the nose. Um, it smells <clears throat> a little weak. That's the way it's coming through. I was a little weak. I'm really got to have to put my nose in the glen to get anything out of it. Not a bad nose, just nothing really complex at least. So let's go into it. Mmm. Mmm. It's giving me an almost like a little bit of a medicinal cherry note. Um. Yeah, like that, that feeling that's left on my center to back of the palate is almost a medicinal cherry. Think like a Ludens cough drop or just any kind of cherry medicine, you know, like cherry liquid, like cherry NyQuil or something. Is, is that, that's the flavor that's hitting me and I can't get over that when that pops on my palate. Um, not bad, but that's the one that's punching me in the face. So there's some, I mean, there, again, there's some caramel vanilla in there. You know, I say that with all of these because it's bourbon, but it is. Um, there's a nice sweetness on top of it too, almost like a brown sugar sweetness. A little bit of, a little bit butterscotchy, but what's overwhelming my palate is that, that cherry medicinal burn. So we'll come back through and we'll see if anything changes. All right, sample number three. <sighs> So this one smells pretty nice too, actually. Oak forward again. Um, oak coming through on this and very candied. It smells very candied. And when I say candied, I'm not talking like, um, like it's almost like a sugar candy is what it's like. It's it smelled like to me. Like a sugary coated fruit of some kind, maybe. Good nose. Not a, not a huge amount of proof punch, which is good. You know, no alcohol burn coming out. It smells nice. Let's give this one a sip. Cheers. Mmm. 
boy, that's good. Oak dominant for me on, on this one. Whatever this is, I'm getting oak on the front. Takes over a little bit on the center with a little bit of, like a, of that barrel barrel bite. Not a huge amount of oak on the finish, which is surprising because usually if I get oak on the front, I'm getting a lot of oak on the back. That's where I get my oak usually is on the back of the palate. Really nice flavor here though. It's got great sweetness. It's got some fruit notes. The sweetness comes through well. And then oak, I mean, for some reason, this one is, is oak dominant to me, but really good stuff. Well balanced. Not, one thing doesn't stick out more than another. That's maybe an early favorite for me first time through here. So, all right, sample number four. Oh, this has got a good nose. This 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 smells nice and rich, deep and complex. Um, the only it's a little bit of alcohol burn coming through, so it could be pretty high proof. It's got really good, I mean, really good nose though. I mean, I'm getting a lot of oak, a lot of deep, rich caramel, vanilla, brown sugar coming through. It smells like barrel char. Which I love. I love it when I smell barrel char in a glass. Mm. Mm. Wow. Compared to the other three, chocolatey. Um, that that's got some proof too. Woo! Chocolatey, but the mouth coating. I mean, it's just stuck to the sides of my palate, center to back of the palate. Actually gives me Kentucky Hug, which I didn't get on the other three. Um, still going. Finish is still going on this. So this has got to be maybe something non-chill filtered. Like it's giving me that non-chill filtered feel where I just have the sticking to the sides of the palate. But uh, awesome. It's got a little bit of rye spice center to back of the palate. The barrel char again just takes over that center to back of the palate. That's a really good pour. I said three might have been one of my favorites, but now uh, four is really good too. So... First time through, um, I've got a couple favorites already. We'll take about 10, 15 minutes. Let the palate rest, you know, come back. We need, we need to let the palate rest with barrel proof. So I'll see you guys in a couple minutes. All right, everyone, we're back. Took about 10, 15 minutes there. Again, we're gonna go back down from four to one. And when I do this, we're trying things in different order. The palate's rusted. Things tend to change. Flavors come out when they didn't the first time. So. Let's get right into it. Number four here. This has got just such depth. Like, it's just got such depth on the nose. Such rich barrel. Rich barrel oak notes. And it's still got a creaminess to it. You know, almost like a whipped vanilla. A lot of caramel coming through, too. And heavy brown sugar. You know, it's like crisped brown sugar. Almost like creme brulee-like with the, the burning of the sugar. Smells great. Mmm. Immediately when it hits the front of the tongue, it's like, boom, burst of flavor. I love that. Everything I just described on the nose, that like, comes through on, like, you know, it just joins like right on the front of the tongue. And then as the finish sets in, that's where the oak starts to take over for me. Really, really nice. Again, barrel tannins and barrel char coming out on the back of the palate but it's not like drying astringent oak at all. It's got a nice creaminess, mouth feels great, and finish, still going. That's a good one, that's a good one, I'll tell you right now. All right, back to number three. So this is, I described a lot of oak the first time through, and again, the oak's coming through, but it's a different type of oak than I described on four. This is almost a a little bit of like a musty oak. I don't know about musty oak, but it's reminding me of like that rickhouse smell where it smells like old barrels, you know? It just smells like old, old barrels filled with whiskey. Nothing wrong with that at all. Definitely not, doesn't drink as hot as number four did, but the front of the palate's got great sweetness again. Not as much the, the caramel vanilla sweetness I was talking about maybe in round one, but the it's almost like a, a Spree's candy or a Smarties candy coming through, where it's like that sugary sweetness. You know, it's got more sugary, like candy, like when I say candied, that's kind of what's coming through. 
Um, well balanced, again, because it doesn't drink that hot. Well balanced with the oak and that sweetness. A really good pour. That's a really good pour. All right, back to number two. Well, I'll, I'll be honest, as this opened up, I think it's gotten worse after like 15 more minutes. It's smelling a lot more astringent now. I'm really putting my nose into the glen to get anything out of it. And it doesn't just, it just smells like there's not much there. I don't know. At least compared to the other three in this lineup. You know, this may be a stacked lineup. We'll see at the end, but. Um, again, it's holding true to that, like, Luden's cherry cough drop. It is, for me. Little, little medicinal in the cough drop. Um, I will say this time through, it drank better. You know, I think that with more time, this definitely drank better. Um, I, it leaned more towards a darker cherry, but it still has that cherry, cherry flavor, like cherry flavored candy I don't like. You know, when it's bright, bright cherry notes, I get in whiskey. Not a fan. The deep, rich, dark cherry raisin, that type of stuff, I love. You know, it's great. But if it's that candied, like Jolly Rancher cherry flavor, I can't do it. I can't do it. And that, that's just what this has given me. So, unfortunately, it didn't redeem itself too much second time through. All right, finally, number one. This has got a great nose. This has got a great nose. Nose is way better second time through than the first time through. Trying it last, I think. That nose is awesome. Love it. A lot of, again, rice spice predominant on the nose. Good stuff, man. Balance of sweetness, fruitiness, oak, and the rice spice. Boy, this is a tough round. Mmm. What great flavor. Everything about that one is good. Um, honestly, this kind of has a little bit of like a, I mean, the spice is definitely there without question. Got a little bit like an earthy tone to me too. Like almost a grassy note, but when I say that, I don't mean youthful grassy note. Um, it doesn't taste like young whiskey by any means. It just has Earth, it's just a little earthy, you know, it's just a little earthy. That's the best way I can describe it. Um, and if you've had it, whatever this is, maybe, maybe you know what I'm talking about. I love that though. That's a very well-balanced pour, whatever that is. Really good stuff. All right, again, gonna take 10, 15 minutes, take a break, rest the palate, see what order we wanna come up with. I'll be right back. All right, everyone, we're back. Off camera. Tried a lot of these side by side here, see what order I wanted. I knew what my last was going to be, but from there on, it was really a toss up. Good lineup this was. Um, a lot of a lot of good options. So let's go right into the results here. <sighs> here we go. Coming in at number four. This is sample number two, which is Maker's Mark Cast Strength. Okay, here it is. Now. If a lot of you watch the channel, you know I'm not a Maker's Mark person. Like, I'm just not. It, it's not my flavor profile. It doesn't agree with me. This is probably my favorite expression from them, other than the RC6. The RC6 I had was good. I actually really liked that. I enjoyed it. Still gave me that cherry note I don't enjoy, but overall it was good. Um, cast Strength is second for me. At least it's got the proof notes. It gives you more flavor, better mouthfeel. Um, at about 55 bucks, there's worse priced whiskeys out there. You know, but honestly, when I got this bottle last time, I pretty much only use it in cocktails. You know, a nice high proof cocktail, nothing wrong with that. Number three, my third choice is sample number four, Bell Mead Cast Strength. Okay, so that this was the one I described as, um, I got right here. This is the one I described as having that oak forward note, kind of like a musty oak rickhouse type smell. Um, that's what came through. It, really good though. I mean, this is MGP, probably what six to eight years maybe. Um, and Bell Mead is, is good stuff. You know, I always recommend MGP products, especially for someone starting into whiskey. If you're branching into a new type of whiskey, so if you're branching into new, like say you're branching into barrel proof, this is one I'd recommend. Little pricier here in Michigan, about seventy bucks, but um, 
Good stuff. MGP cast strength. It's really hard to mess up, and it's really hard to go wrong with. That's a good bottle. If you can find the single barrels, even better. Better for that. Number two choice. Oh, goodness. Let's see what's moving on. Sample number three. Four roses barrel strength. Wow. So four roses single barrel. Do I have one over here? Yeah. It lost in my um, in my single barrel battle of the bourbons. But the barrel strength came through, and this is good. Um, this is called Warpy Lid, number three. And funny thing about this bottle, when I got it, it definitely had a Warpy Lid, that's for sure. Nine years, nine months, so I, I put one in here that wasn't overly aged. You know, I wanted it to be average bottles of everything I included in the lineup. 59.1% um, on this bottle, and it's an OBSV, which is actually the same recipe you get in your normal single barrels uh, you'll buy off the shelf. So... Again, I wanted to include whiskeys of every category that were kind of the, what you might find, you know, on the shelf in the wild. I didn't want to put anything that was my favorite batch ever of something that'll just blow the competition away. So that leaves number one as, number one, Elijah Craig Barrel Proof. And that makes perfect sense with all the, the dark, deep, rich notes I was getting, the barrel char, one of my favorite, absolute favorite bottles, no matter what the batch is. This batch I included for this round was the A119. A solid batch for sure. I mean, nothing wrong with it, absolutely, but I, again, it's considered an average batch for me. I like the A120 better, I like the B520 better, um, and C919 was one of my favorites as well. So, um, not a terrible batch, not a bad batch, obviously placed first in this whole lineup. But, <laughs> but um, there's definitely better batches out there. I'm curious to see if this will win the whole thing because early on, in my own opinions, I thought it was going to be an early favorite. So, well, thank you all so much for hanging out. Round number three is done in the books. Appreciate y'all being here and watching. Let me know in today's lineup what would you have put as your final two moving ahead. You know, any favorites out of this lineup? Any you haven't tried? You know, what would be the two that you would move ahead in this lineup? Also, want to know what is your favorite barrel proof? I asked this last video, got some good feedback. I want to hear more. Favorite barrel proof on the market? Anything. It doesn't have to be any of the 16 I put in here. If you have something else you like, put it in there. Have to give a thank you so much to my brand new patrons. You guys are the best. And gals. Um, all the support really means a lot. I've got some really, really cool stuff coming up on Patreon. Uh, you guys fi will find out about it first. Things in my own life I'm working on that I'm hoping to share with the rest of you soon. Really hoping it comes to fruition, but we'll see. Um, last thing I want to say is if you haven't checked out my website, bourbonsane.com, please do. I'm selling these really cool challenge coins or whiskey hats, as well as glassware, t-shirts, and we are doing weekly whiskey reviews and blogs too. So every Monday, in addition to the YouTube episodes, we're going to be doing whiskey reviews on there. So just a place for you to go for whiskey news, things like that. It's a lot of fun. I like doing it, you know, as long as I get the time. A lot of fun. I'll see you all next Saturday. We're going to have round four, and we'll find out what our Elite Eight's going to be. Thank you all so much for being here. Stay insane, everyone.